Hi there. It's the 23rd annual Have a Heart Wishathon for Make a Wish. Wishes can't wait. My name is Brett, and we are in the middle of a big day today. We're not letting cold weather, we're not letting snow, we're not letting a coronavirus stop us from making wishes come true today with the Jonesboro Radio Group and our partners at KAIT. You can uh, text the word WISH to 77000. W-I-S-H, text WISH to 77000, and we will send you back a link. That's how you can donate. You can also just call. Just pick up the phone and call 870-933-8800 and help make wishes come true on this 23rd annual Have a Heart Wishathon. It's hard to believe that we've been a part of this uh, for, for so long, that we've been doing it for so long. We've got a conversation that we really think that you'll enjoy. We are joined now uh, on this call by Andrew McDonough. And Andrew is the father of Chase McDonough. And uh, Chase and, uh, and, and Andrew, uh, Andrew's wife, Jenna, not pictured. And uh, so first of all, uh, Andrew, thanks for being on with us. And, uh, and, and let's, let's, talk, let's talk about you and your family. I, I'm jokingly saying Jenna is not pictured. You guys, <laughs> you, guys are, uh, you, you guys are a family. You're in Pocahontas. Yes, sir. Okay. Tell, tell me about your family. How it's who's who's who and how old they are. Okay. Um, my wife is Jenna. Uh, we have four kids. Uh, our oldest are Ty and Drew. Uh, they're Chase's older brothers. They're twins. Uh, they're 22 years old. Uh, Ty just uh, graduated from uh, University of Central Arkansas and is working in the Rogers and Fayetteville area. Um, Drew uh, is still attending the University of Central Arkansas uh, and will be graduating soon as a special education teacher. Uh, Chase, uh, of course, is a sophomore at Arkansas State. Um, and we have a 17-year-old daughter named Bryn, uh, who's a senior uh, in high school at Pocahontas High School. With all these kids in college at the same time, did you, uh, did you ever have any trouble, uh, you know, buying books uh, at the beginning of the semester and stuff like that? Yeah. Have- that's expensive. Yeah, it is. It is, boy. <laughs> you know, but we're, we're so blessed. Uh, you know, they've they've uh, got a lot of scholarships, and uh, they, right. they're obviously smart. Take after their mom, and <laughs> and uh, so it was. It's all good. That's nice of you to say. Is she sitting behind the camera somewhere instructing you how to <laughs> how to conduct this part of the interview? Is it uh, not? No, not at all. But she, oh. she would tell me that if 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 she was. If she was, okay. Yeah. Well, you're you're in Pocahontas uh, at at home uh, this morning. We're gonna we're gonna talk about uh, uh, some pretty exciting things that happened in the city of Pocahontas, courtesy of your son Chase, who's nineteen. And you said he's a sophomore he's at 20. ASU. He's twenty yeah, now. 20. Okay, yes, gotcha. twenty now. Yep. gotcha. What? Uh, tell me first of all, uh, Chase, being the wish kid, uh, that's the member of your family. What? Uh, what was he diagnosed with, and how long ago? When did that happen? So the first diagnosis uh, was uh, late January, early February, um, seven years ago. Uh, yeah. Chase was thirteen years old. Um, he was a really help, healthy, um, happy kid uh, in junior high at the time, um, played a lot of sports, uh, and just got sick with what we thought was uh, the flu or strep throat. Um, and then uh, February 1st uh, of that year, seven years ago, so right around this time of year, um, we found out that he had Steven Johnson syndrome. Uh, it's, a auto, it's an immune uh, deficiency disease. Um, where actually, uh, as his body starts to try to fight uh, a certain illness, uh, it turns against itself. Um, and so uh, we spent, uh, he spent 14 days uh, in a coma uh, in, at the um, Arkansas Children's Hospital uh, for that first hospitalization. Now, Chase has been hospitalized uh, every year uh, since, uh, typically in the winter. Um, and it's typically when uh, you and I and, and everyone is is fighting those um, cold and flus and pneumonia and that type of thing. So um, if his immune system gets uh, too low, uh, again, he goes into that uh, response and, it, and it's an immune response that's negative to his body. Uh, so typically the uh, mortality rate uh, is 50 percent. Uh, on your first uh, episode, and then uh, it goes up from there uh, each time you're hospitalized. 
does it get, and, and please understand where I'm coming from when I say this, but do, do the hospitalizations get easier as he goes through more of them? Is it easier on the body to figure out what it needs to do in order to help him? Well, I don't know that it's easier. We have uh, learned through a lot of specialists, and a lot of great doctors at uh, universe or at the uh, Arkansas Children's Hospital, a uh, fabulous place, um, to identify a little bit earlier. Uh, so the earlier the de- detection, uh, the sooner that he can get uh, the medicine necessary, uh, not to cure it, it's uncurable at this time, uh, but more so to combat uh, what the body's trying to do uh, and subsequently make the hospitalizations uh, shorter. Um, but each time it really starts to affect uh, his internal organs, in, in particular his lungs, um, and can be really dangerous. He's already has um, you know, some, some issues with the, with the left lung in particular. Um, and every time it just, it goes and, and, um, strikes those same, uh, internal organs. I didn't pay attention uh, close enough in biology, but I would assume this is just kind of a blood cell thing going, right? I mean, are, 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 are the blood cells attacking each other because they think there's a problem? And, you know, is that, is that how it works in, in layman's terms? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Basically it shows like, um, you know, third degree burns, you start the, the body starts to blister, Mm -hmm. uh, on the outside and the inside. So all the mucous membranes, your eyes, your nose, your mouth, your throat, uh, your stomach and and your lungs, uh, start to get these blisters, uh, and your body's, uh, like I said, adversely, uh, thinks it's fighting, uh, whatever it is that, that you have, but it's Mm -hmm. not, uh, it's actually shutting the body and the organs down. Is this a disorder that, um, to your knowledge, a lot of people have to deal with? You know, it's becoming more and more uh, prevalent and and doctors understanding it. I think it was misdiagnosed for a long time. Uh, the Mayo, the two doctors at the Mayo Clinic, uh, Stevens and Johnson, uh, the, were the ones that discovered it. And right. that's why it has its name. Right. Um, and, th- and the more that... Uh, it shows and the more that people get it, uh, especially now it's, it can be triggered by pharmaceuticals. Uh, and so, uh, with certain drugs, a lot of people are having this adverse reaction, which people do a lot with, with certain drugs, they start to get hives and that type of stuff. Um, and yet this becomes even more deadly. Uh, and so it can happen there. Uh, Chase's was really a combination. Uh, he had, uh, basically walking pneumonia, uh, microbacterial pneumonia. Uh, and then, uh, we were giving him, uh, ibuprofen, uh, to combat the, the fever. Uh, and those two things together is what, uh, initially pushed him into that autoimmune response. Um, and, and again, now that he's done it, his body doesn't know it can't wipe the memory clean. Mm-hmm. And so each time he gets uh, a low immune response, um, it goes right back into doing that. Uh, so obviously with the pandemic this last year and yeah. um, his susceptibility anyways, uh, it's been really scary. But, you know, th- the good news is Chase is thriving. Uh, he's been uh, healthy since last October. Um, he's enjoying his time at, uh, at Arkansas State, uh, loves it. Uh, loves it there and is doing really, really well. So um, he wanted everyone to know that uh, he appreciated uh, all the thoughts and prayers over the past seven years. And each time that he was hospitalized, uh, he has a big following. Uh, His mom has a big following on social uh, media. And so a lot of people, uh, you know, really keep up with his story. Um, he's been on the news nationally and, and, uh, even locally here, uh, his story has been, uh, shared and, and we like to always do that. Uh, Jen and I really just want to share awareness cause it could happen to anybody. Mm-hmm. Um, it has nothing to do with, uh, genetics or, or anything like that. Uh, and again, he was really healthy and now he's, uh, dealing with that and, uh, you know, has to deal with, um, anytime that he's feeling sick, that he could go into that response. So um, I'm not sure how a 13 through 20 year old deals with that, but uh, he's done a pretty amazing job. We're really proud of him. I can see why you would be. We're talking with Andrew McDonough, who is the father of Chase, and they're in Pocahontas. And Chase is a wish kid. 
and he is someone who has benefited from a wishathon like we're having today. This is the 23rd annual Have a Heart Wishathon. You can text WISH to donate to uh, 77,000. Text WISH to 77,000. We'll send you a link, or you can donate to, by just going to wishathon.org, or you can call 870-933-8800. Andrew, how did you guys uh, first get introduced to Make a Wish? What was that process? Uh, someone, uh, and I don't know whether it was Chase's doctor or uh, there were several people in the community uh, who were aware of Make a Wish and uh, reached out to that organization. Uh, they do background check and and they just make sure uh, that the illness qualifies and some other things that they have to do. Um, and then they reached out to us uh, and Chase in particular. Um, he was 17 years old at the time. Um, and they actually come up and, and do an interview uh, at the house with the family, uh, in particular with him. Mm -hmm. um, and they just, uh, you know, talk about the organization and um just, you know, in general, asking Chase uh, if he were to have one wish, what that would be. Um, and, and you know, they told him, hey, be selfish, you know, do something for yourself. You you need to, you know, um, take advantage of, the, of the, that you've been nominated and, and what it is. And, um, you know, it's a great organization. We couldn't be um, more blessed uh, to be a part of Make a Wish and Chase be a, a Wish kid. Uh, it's an organization that uh, we continue to support uh, every year, uh, not only ourselves and our family uh, doing our own drives, uh, but uh, anything that we can do. Uh, so I encourage everybody to, um, you know, give. I know it's a tough time and I know it's, it's difficult to give in these situations, but uh, even just a little bit can help. Uh, it brings such hope um, that you can't imagine, not only to the child, but, uh, to parents. And so as yeah. a parent, um, you can, you can, you know, feel what it's like to see your son or daughter, uh, go through something like this. Uh, mm -hmm. and it's just really difficult. And, and this organization has been such a blessing. You're, um, and we'll talk about his wish and how he wasn't selfish with his wish, which I'm very impressed by. I, but you were talking about things that you do as a family. You, you're wearing a hoodie this morning for the uh, fifth annual race for Chase. So that's uh, you. You've done that quite a few times, and and that's just one of the other things that you're involved with as a family, right? Yeah, every February. Uh, February is uh, SJS Awareness, uh, and it's blue. Wear blue for awareness for for Stephen Johnson syndrome, um, and as well uh, with all the following uh, and people that uh, again that my wife uh, on social media wants to follow his story. Uh, we do a a race to to raise money to donate. Uh, they're doing some really good research uh, at Vanderbilt University uh, over in Tennessee. Uh, for Stephen Johnson's. And uh, then again, we also every year do uh, something for Make-A-Wish uh, gotcha. so that we can give that money to them too. So let's talk for a second about uh, what Make-A-Wish did for uh, for Chase. He, he was not selfish. He did not want to go to Disney. He didn't want to do a whole bunch of things that a lot of other people do. He is a big fan of tennis. Uh, and he decided to do something for your community there in Pocahontas. What was his wish? Yeah, that's correct. Um, you know, really when they came in, we're talking to him, uh, you know, they said, where would you like to go? And Chase is a big traveler. Uh, he always wanted to go to Europe and they said, hey, we'll do a big 10 day uh, Europe trip for you and the family and whoever right. you want to bring. And and yet um, he, he just said, no, he, uh, he had played tennis uh, in high school. Um, was really successful actually uh, at it uh, and went to state uh, part uh, three years. Uh, so sophomore, junior and senior year. Mm -hmm. um, and it was important to him. It helped him focus on something else. Uh, you know, when everyone wanted to do that, it actually helped him rehab as well. Uh, like I said, that really affected his lungs and the doctors really pushed to try to to do something that's uh, cardiovascular that that helps you rebuild and um, so in a lot of ways uh, it was just something that was good for him but mentally and physically and so um, he had played on the uh, city courts uh, for the high school the high school doesn't have courts of their own mm -hmm. um, and they were in really bad shape um, 
and of course, you know, the city, uh, like, like a lot here in Northeast Arkansas, didn't have the money, um, you know, to redo them or, or, um, put a lot of, um, you know, although they're used a lot, uh, and Chase saw that as a family, we go up, uh, and use them all the time. Uh, we try to stay very active and, and that's one of the things that we all enjoy to do. Right. Uh, his older brother, uh, had done that and went to state as well. So we're kind of a, a tennis family. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so he just said, uh, what I want to do is, uh, redo these courts and, uh, put my name, uh, up there on them. And so that people can uh, remember my story, uh, bring awareness, uh, and, uh, also always bring to the forefront the make a wish. So, uh, there's a beautiful sign up there and, uh, make a wish is prevalent on that sign as well as, uh, the U S tennis association, um, and a lot of, you know, just great people in the community and, and donators too. So that had to make you so proud as a dad, you know, Boy, it, that, it he sure would, did. that he would do that. That would be his choice. He could have anything they're saying. They're saying, what do you want? Where do you want to go? And he says, I want to do this for my town. That's correct. Yeah, it was, uh, it was amazing. He said that, uh, it was on his heart, you know, listen, when we, uh, we were recent, uh, just moved to Northeast Arkansas, uh, not long before Chase got sick, uh, mm-hmm. relocation for my job. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we moved to this small uh, community of Pocahontas, Arkansas and North, and Northeast Arkansas and, and got to meet some great people. And um, when he got sick, people in this community rallied around him. Um, they had benefits and they did all kinds of things. And um, it was just the prayers uh, and the thoughts of everyone was, it was just amazing. And he just never knew um, how to truly thank everyone. You know, we took an ad out in the paper and you do those things and you try to reach out to, to everyone, but it, his story kind of blew up and went uh, not only just regional, but uh, went national. National. Yeah. So, yeah. And he, and he just really wanted to, to thank everyone, people that he didn't even know. Um, you know, the, uh, as we were sharing his story when he was in a coma that first time, um, you know, my wife went from, you know, six or 700, uh, followers on social media to um, tens of thousands um, wow. because it was shared. And uh, it just started to get some, uh, you know, uh, people recognizing and wanting to help or just wanting to send prayers. And uh, Chase just didn't know any other way to say thank you. And and he's so unselfish. Um, you know, he said, I don't really need anything. I don't need anything in life uh, except for to give back. Um, and that's his big message uh, in life. Give back. Um, give back to the people that help you and even those that just need help. So we were really proud. Well, and you know, you used a word a minute ago that makes me think that's what, that's what make a wish does. And you use the word rally. And that's what, that's what make a wish does for kids that are fighting these life threatening illnesses. They help them and their family rally, circle the wagons. Everybody's on the same team here we're going to get through this. And that's the positivity of the Make-A-Wish organization. And it's so important for us to have days like today where we have this wish-a-thon. We've done it 23 times. It's the 23rd annual Have a Heart Wish-a-thon. I I don't think I can give the way to give too much. You can call 933-8800. It's an 870 area code, 870-933-8800. One of our volunteers will grab that phone. You can text if it's easier for you. Text the word WISH to 77,000, or you could just go to wishathon.org. That's another way. We're trying to make it easy for you. And if you normally, this is something that we didn't mention a minute ago. If you normally uh, give in your in your town, uh, Rector, Culver House in, uh, in, in Jonesboro, there are different ways that we've been talking about on the air throughout the day that you can give in the city where you live and your money will count for the... Uh, Harrisburg roadblock for the uh, uh, March tree roadblock. I'm just looking at our list. Uh, Bay, Bono, Pogahannas, Piggott, uh, Paragool, all these different opportunities. And we'll discuss those on the air. Let's talk, uh, Andrew, before we let you go, let's, let's talk about the importance of giving. And you are, as the father of a child, uh, Chase, who has received his wish granted, Let's talk about the importance of days like today and how that affects not only 
the 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 wish kid themselves but also the family and in your case the community absolutely and again i can't um stress enough how great of an organization it was um that rallying and the and that positivity to not only chase um to just look forward to something sometimes you're just grasping mm-hmm. uh it's something to be positive and you got you got to have hope you know you got to have hope you right. got to have hope and that, and that gives hope. Uh, and then when everyone feels that, uh, when the community around you feels that, um, it, it's just amazing to see what can happen. Uh, it really can. And so, uh, the organization is terrific. Uh, we'll continue, uh, the rest of our lives to, to give and to talk about and to raise awareness of, of what they do as an organization and how to give and to be giving. Um, and again, whether it's $5 or $10 or whatever you can afford, um, every little bit helps. Uh, it helps this organization because all of those donations go right to the kid, um, and, and, and brings again, that rallying positivity and hope, uh, to, to them and the family. And that's what this day is about. Andrew, thank you. Thank you so much for your time, uh, to be with us and talk with us today. Is there anything that, uh, that we didn't touch on that you want to mention before we let you go? Um, you know, I think uh, the community should be aware that, uh, you know, uh, that donating that meant so much to us. And, and again, I wanted to thank everyone and we all do. Um, we had a really special year this year, uh, Chase's youngest sister who had been, uh, a five-year starter in volleyball and, and really successful at it, uh, decided to forego her, her volleyball season, her senior year to play tennis on his courts. So he got to see his sister play tennis on his courts. Awesome. Uh, the first year that she participated and she went to state, uh, and did really well. And, and so, um, he's giving lessons, uh, as well, uh, to, local community or uh, kids here um, this this fall and in the spring he'll start again and uh, I just think it means the world to him uh, we want to thank everyone uh, not only in the po- Pocahontas area all of northeast Arkansas and everywhere uh, please just donate uh, to the wish uh, make a wish uh, and do what you can he's a man that knows the impact of your donation Andrew we thank you again for your time today we appreciate you Appreciate you. Thanks for being with us. Not not a problem. Thank you. You bet. We want to wrap things up by just reminding you the the Have a Heart Wishathon continues. We're partners with uh, our friends at KAIT. You can call 870-933-8800 to donate. You can go online to wishathon.org or what's very simple, just text the word wish to 77,000 and you can help make a child's wish come true. And it might be an unselfish wish like the one that uh, Chase exhibited a few years ago in Pocahontas. We appreciate you uh, being a part of our day today. The Have a Heart Wishathon continues with KAIT and the Jonesboro Radio Group.